MATLAB has a ton of functions that you can use for timing. There's the date time functions and a lot to go with that. And then there's also some timer functions. In this video, we're gonna go through the tick and talk function. So tick starts a timer and talk will stop a timer. I can say tick and then I can say talk and it'll just tell me how much time has elapsed in my command window. Or I can actually assign talk to a variable and then I can store that time that has elapsed in a variable. Knowing that I can keep track of time like a stopwatch, there's a lot I can do interacting with my user. I can keep track of how much time it takes for them to do a simple input, such as what is your name? Most of the time, you're not going to keep track of how long it takes your user to give you a name and then tell them how much time it took for them to provide their own name. If some places that you might want to actually keep track of time is when you're doing some type of quiz. So a lot of times when you ask a question, you want to know how long it takes to answer that question or if you're playing some type of game. For this one, I'm going to go through and I'm going to make a quiz and have different questions show up and I'm going to actually time my user how long it takes them to answer those questions. So yes, I could hard code in a bunch of different questions and then time every one of those. But one thing I try to make clear throughout all these videos is that hard coding is not the way to go. I don't wanna sit here and hard code five different questions and have the same questions pop up every single time. I always like to use the random functions to add an element of change. So in this particular case, I'm gonna use the randi function so I can set four different scenarios for four different types of problems. So I'm either gonna have multiplication, division, addition, or subtraction. These are all gonna be very simple math problems, but I could use the same type of concept for anything else. So the randi function, I'm going to have four different values generated, one, two, three, or four, which is going to represent plus, minus, subtract, or divide. And once it generates those values, I'm going to assign those to either multiplication, division, addition, or subtraction. So in order to do this, I need to create two different variables, one variable that's generating the numbers one through four, and one variable that's going to be a cell array of those four different symbols. I also need two random values to show up to be the numbers that I'm going to add or subtract or any of that. I'm just randomly going to pick one through 100. I want to be more focused on the concept of I can generate randomized questions using these different approaches. And again, you could do a lot of different things with this type of idea. Once I find all these values, I wanna go ahead and display to my user what's the question that I'm asking them. So I'm going to be using an fprintf. Everything's going to be displayed in my command window. I could go ahead and do this a different approach and do dialog boxes, but in this particular video, I'm sticking to my command window. So in my fprintf, the first thing I'm displaying is that number. What's the number that they're adding, subtracting, dividing, whatever. So that first number is a digit. So I'm using percent %d, which is for displaying that digit. The next part I'm displaying in my fprintf is a string. So remember all of those symbols I have, the multiplication, division, addition, subtraction are stored as strings in a cell array. So I'm going to slice out randomly one of those different symbols and display it in my fprintf. So I need to use the percent %s placeholder. And then next I have my final number, which is going to be another percent %d and then I'm going to display that. Now that I'm displaying that to my user, the next thing I'd want my user to see is I want to ask them, what's the answer to that question? So I need to collect a user input. In this video, I'm not actually checking my user's input to see if it's a valid answer. By valid, I mean it's not empty, it's not a string, it's actually a number because the only type of inputs I should be receiving from my user should be numeric input. Since I'm not doing that, my user could just hit enter. And if you notice on my input, I don't have the second input argument of comma, apostrophe s, apostrophe, meaning I'm only able to collect numbers at this point. That's okay for this code. But again, in general, when you're creating a program, you really need to be thinking about that. So if you're doing something similar, I recommend checking out my videos on validating user input. So once I collect that user answer, I'm going to want to compare that to my actual real answer. So in order to do that, I need to actually go calculate my real answer first. So I've already displayed to my user what the formula is. So I already have an fprintf for my formula, but in this case, I actually want also an sprintf. So remember, sprintf does the same thing as fprintf, but it stores that text into a variable instead of putting it in the command window. If you want to dive further into sprintf, I do have another video on that. But here I'm just basically copying what I did for fprintf, changing it to an sprintf, and I have to modify it a little bit because I don't want all the spacing and all the different information that my user is seeing. All I care about is the actual equation. One really cool function I'm using here is the string to symbolic expression function. So it takes a string and it turns it to the actual equation, the symbolic expression of what I wrote in the string, and then it solves it. So that's the str 
number two SYM function that I have here. So my input argument for my string to SIM function is going to be that string that I created. So the five times five or whatever string I have for that particular problem. In this case, I have 28 times 55, and then it just spits out the real answer. So it does the math for me. And then that way, when I'm asking my user for an answer, I can actually compare it to the real answer calculation. And I know if my user's right or not. Now that I have the real answer and I have my user input, I can compare them. And as long as my user's input does not equal the real answer, I'm gonna keep prompting them to just keep trying again. In reality, this type of program would be pretty frustrating to interact with as a user. If I were to be asked a question, some math question, and I get it wrong, and I just keep getting prompted over and over again with no hints or anything just to keep inputting it, if I can't get it right, eventually I'm just going to leave and stop interacting with this. But for the purpose of what we're doing here and just creating a randomized test, um, or randomized quiz that's going to be timing how long it takes me to answer different math questions, this is okay the way I'm going forward with it. But it's always a good idea to think about your user and think about who's my user going to be, who's my target audience, and how do I want them to interact with this program I'm creating. So we can be using this for fun, like I am here just doing a quiz and trying to keep track. I could use it to generate a score. If I had a game, I could keep track of how long it takes someone to complete a game, and that could be part of calculating their score. Or if I have multiple quiz questions like this, I could use that time to track, again, how long it takes. And I could have some high score of like who completed the most questions the fastest, um, different concepts like that. If I am doing that, I'd probably want to add another component in here and say, OK, what was the complexity of the question and evaluate that a different way. And then that could also help me figure out the score as well. Again, always think about your user. Think about your program. What's your purpose? What are you doing with this? And just have fun with it. So there's a lot of different things out there. Don't limit yourself and just keep adding new things to whatever program you are working on now. If you're working with any tiny functions now and you have questions, I'd love to hear about them. Go ahead and comment in the chat. Or if you've used Tick and Talk before or you're using it now, please tell me how you're using it. What are you doing in your program? I will keep going through more different timing functions because again, I said there's a date time function, a lot of different functions around there. And a lot of times we do want to be able to track dates and keep track of what's today. If you have a particular problem related to timing that you want help on, please be sure to comment and I will help point you in the direction of what type of functions to use. And if I have any relevant videos, I'll point you into the direction of those as well.